In the U.S., we still have this probably outdated conception around scientific research in China as all being basically driven by this great power war between the U.S. and China. And so there's an incentive to basically fudge the numbers in order to project this idea that they're making these advancements that are effectively hot air. Yeah. And that conception may have been true 20, 30 years ago, yeah, but it is, no certainly, it is certainly not true today. And you can not only see that in the fundamental research side, but you can also see that in how that research ends up in end user products where the best phones, the, the best cars, like all the frontier modern Western things that we have historically been like, with the exception of really AI right now, which is still, you know, we still have the edge. The, the Huawei style phones are better. The, the Yang Wang cars are better. Um, not only like it, and that's proven by them selling in the West, right? And feature for feature. And so this is like a real, like you can certainly say that these, some of these seminal figures have their roots that they've now reestablished are clearly bearing fruit. Yeah. And the evidence of that is undeniable at this exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. It's, oh my God. Yeah, exactly. One of the goats of physics, Yang Cheng Ning, Nobel prize winner. After his retirement from Stony Brook. He goes back to China. He goes back to his alma mater, Tsinghua University, he becomes the honorary director of the newly established Institute for Advanced Study over there. Mm -hmm. He really goes back and returns and pours a lot of effort into advancing fundamental disciplines and cultivating a new generation of scientific talent in China. And a lot of people give him a lot of credit for where China is in fundamental physics today. I was going to say, 